My fellow citizens and well-wishers of St. Kitts and Nevis, I am honored that so many of you have taken the time to be part of this, our fifth annual national consultation on the economy. I am delighted to extend a warm welcome to each of you here in your individual and representative capacities. National consultations are appropriate mechanisms, in my view, in an evolving people's participatory democracy and are intended to infuse decision-making with the viewpoints, perspectives, concerns, expectations, and preferences of the people within our jurisdiction. In the past, national consultations have been quite meaningful, and I am certain that this fifth one will be no less productive and successful. The government ought to be commended for drawing on the collective strength, wisdom, and experiences of civil society, the private sector, and the public sector in developing response to our many challenges. I welcome the focus this year on issues relating to young people and their contribution to development. The center of attention is positive, healthy, and helpful, and it augurs well for our future. Alas, this is an opportunity to give meaning to slogans such as, young people are our future, by ensuring that they are our present. It reminds us again that every child, whether born at Plumtree in Phillips Village, in the backwaters of St. Kitts, or in the lush frigate bay, must have a chance to become all that he or she has the potential to be. We are not just a young nation nearing age 26. We are a nation of young people with more than 45% of our population below the age of 25. And indeed, 65% of the population is between zero and 35 years. It should be clear, therefore, that young people must be at the core of our national priorities. Investing in our young people is the only way to ensure our sustained development. In a technological and service-oriented global economy, 75% of the fastest growing occupations require more than a high school diploma. We need people with acute minds and agile bodies to take advantage of the emerging opportunities. As outlined in our federal youth policy, our young people must be empowered to be nation builders, entrepreneurs, and role models in all spheres of economic, social, and spiritual activity of this beautiful country. Our federal youth policy should be of utility in guiding us on some options and providing a perspective for youth participation in development policy. The theme of this consultation illuminates our faith in young people and their capacity to contribute meaningfully to the broader national good. I share the enthusiasm, the boundless energy, hope, and optimism of these young people in our federation and the region. Like them, I abhor defeatism, such as, it can't, such as it can't be done mentality and the foot dragging approach in the conduct of the nation's business. Today, we also formally will receive the finalized report on the poverty situation in our federation. We may want to assess whether it provides data on the linkages between youth and poverty, but more importantly, we must outline a role for young people in poverty reduction strategies. This administration remains optimistic and hopeful about the future of our Federation and the Caribbean region. 
as a father of two daughters under 18 years, and uncle to many more young people, I am confident that our youths will successfully meet the challenges and embrace the opportunities arising from cultural penetration and acculturation, the revolution in ICT, the financial meltdown and economic recession. Ours, of course, has been a history and tradition of triumph over adversity. Some may argue that the amalgam of views at this consultation may be too diverse and divergent for consensus. However, Albert Einstein, words are very instructive for us today. He said, and I quote, out of clutter, find simplicity. From discard, find harmony. In the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. Let us then explore the opportunities which lie within our difficulties, even as we mourn the tragic loss of young people. As a consequence of crime and violence, we must not contain our own pride and delight in the stellar achievements of our young people who, from their own bootstraps and with limited resources, have risen like the proverbial phoenix to prominence. We hail Kim Collins' historic performance in athletics and those of other national athletes, particularly the females, who are improving by leaps and bounds. We hail the achievement of academic degrees by our young people who took advantage of the opportunities in the last decade to pursue higher learning at colleges and universities. Thanks to the outstanding socioeconomic contribution of our development bank. There was a time when student loans were few and far between. Over the last 10 years, the development bank, more than any other entity, has made the chance of, of a university education a routine accomplishment of many. Our in other institutions, such as Social Security, should work more cooperatively with the Development Bank to ensure that additional resources are made available for the bank to assist more students in completing their programs. As university education becomes more costly, the loan quota available to each student must move in a similar direction to avoid students having to accumulate multiple loans to complete their studies. As we invest in building a more prosperous future, we have to ensure that significant capability for the control, management, and ownership of this future resides in our nationals. Education and training, in my view, are not only central to young people's development, but are also the keys to guarantee that such residence of control, management, and ownership is embedded in our people. So far, our experiences have shown that our young people can rise to the occasion. There are many success stories of young entrepreneurs at work. We see young people coming to the fore and meeting the felt needs for innovation in mass communication. For example, we see the development and growth of SK and Vibes and Kiss FM. Equally, there are a growing number of persons who possess skills in information and communication technology and in electronics and who have organized themselves to provide a range of computer and security services. Examples of this, or one example, would be DuPont Security Monitoring. Several young persons have capitalized on the growing importance of the construction sector to invest in trucking, backhoeing, and other services. These include INB, Rock and Dirt, Ali's Trucking, and Regiwell, Regiwell Francis. Of course, the government contributed by way of duty-free concessions. 
I am 